Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can send an email to multiple recipients based on an email template that you've defined in Dynamics 365 or CDS. For the agenda, I'm going to go through a quick recap of my previous WTF episode, followed by the use case, the process, and the data model in CDS before we jump straight into the demo. In my previous WTF episode, I shared with you all how you can use an perform unbound action to send an email template. However, the constraint with that was how you can only send to a single recipient and you can't dynamically add recipients in terms of who else needs to receive that email when you're using an email template, which is what I'm going to be going through today in this WTF episode. For the use case, I am going to look at the insurance industry. So as an insurance advisor, I want to send trustees an email reminder that their policy is due to expire so that their policy can be renewed. For the process, it will be a case that represents the um, renewal. And then we have an insurance advisor that will update a field. This could be triggered automatically on a daily basis. However, for the purpose of this WTF episode, I am going to manually update a field. And then the outcome of it is that an email will be sent to all trustees associated to the trust using an email template that I've defined. For the data model in CDS, I am using an out of the box entity called connections. Connections link one record to another in CDS or in Dynamics 365. In this scenario, I am linking a contact to an account record and I'm going to use the role of trustee so that we know that when looking at these connections, I know that all three are trustees to this particular trust. Now, without further ado, let's jump straight into the demo. Now, in my Power Automate, it has a bunch of actions and I know it might seem a lot, but it will make sense as I talk through this Power Automate. So my trigger will be when a case is updated and the scope is set to organization and the filtering attribute that I'm referencing is my field that I've created in here, send trust policy renewal. And the next action in my Power Automate is using the CDS get record action where I am grabbing the account based on the customer lookup field of the case record. And then the next thing that we're going to do is use a CDS list records action where we want to retrieve the contacts that are associated to the connection um, where the connection role equals trustee. So in my CDS list records action, I'm using the fetch XML query. This will only be visible if you have created your Power Automate in an unmanaged solution. If you do not create your Power Automate in an unmanaged solution, you will not see this query option available. So that's just a tip from me. So going back to my model driven app, we'll have a look at advanced find. And so these are the attributes in my view. I've got the connected to column, which represents the contact. And then we also have the role, which represents the trustee of, in terms of the relationship between the contact and the trust. And when you go back to advanced find, there's a button up here called download fetch XML. When you download it and you view it, this is what it will look like. So we can see a bunch of attributes and we'll see that it's got a reference to the account name as well as the ID of the account. So back in Power Automate, what we want to do is get rid of the explicit reference to the account name as well as the ID of the account and replace them with the dynamic content values based on my get action sorry, my get record action from up here. So now this is saying grab the account based on the name and the ID value from the get uh, account record action. Then what I'm doing in here is a temporary workaround where I'm using a compose action to grab the output of my CDS list records action. I've done this so that I can verify that the CDS list records action has correctly retrieved the three connections which it has. You don't have to do this. I'm simply doing this so 
that I have a peace of mind knowing that the correct connection records have been retrieved. Now, for the remainder of the actions in this Power Automate, I'm going to jump in between my slides and some uh, blog posts or articles to help explain why these actions are necessary. So another Microsoft MVP in our community, AK, he also investigated how um, we can use email templates in terms of uh, using the CDS perform unbound actions. Now in that in the previous WTF episode, you saw that one method and AK also investigated another unbound action called send email from template. Now, the thing is with this action is that it requires a target and this is in the form of a JSON payload. So AK managed to figure out what that JSON payload is by looking at another Microsoft MVP's blog post. His name is Andrew Butenko. So, oh, if you're watching <laughs> this, Andrew, he knows what this is about, by the way. Anyways, by looking at this, um, AK was able to figure out the email target uh, JSON payload. So I'm gonna switch over to my PowerPoint and show you what AK was able to figure out. So from looking at Andrew Butango's blog post, he figured out that there needs to be a reference to the old data type, which is email, and that we also need to have an array which represents the activity parties. So in your, in your array, you can have um, different participation type mask values, which I'll go through shortly. And one of the hacks that he figured out was how to reference the old data type and that was by uh, using an initialized variable and setting it to string so that it can be referenced in the object variable. So while AK was investigating that and learning, I was doing the same thing and I actually came across another forum post in our Dynamic CRM community. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down and show you the post that I came across. So I'm gonna zoom in so this person kindly shared their JSON payload for the email target. And if we take a closer look, remember how I mentioned the email activity parties array? If we look at the different participation type masks, we can see a value of one and we can see a value of two. When you look at the entity reference, we can see system users and contacts. So the other thing that I had to look at was the activity party entity to understand what those activity party type values are. And as you can see, we can see that one equals sender and two equals the recipient. Now, if we scroll further down, we can also see that there are different activities. So the one that we're using today is email. And here are the supported activity party types. So in my use case, I decided, OK, why don't I use BCC as my form of the recipients rather than the two recipients, which is what I have done. So going back to my Power Automate, and if we scroll back up, the first thing that we need to do is form an array. And then we also need to form the rows, which will represent the connections and the sender. And so ultimately, what my JSON payload will look like is something like this. So I have my array and I need to build up the rows which will represent the recipient object as well as the sender object. And in Power Automate, how we can do that is first use the initialize variable to create our array. So I'm calling it activity parties. And then I'm also using another initialize variable action so that I can form the recipient's object, which will represent the rows in my array. So the next action that I'm using is the apply to each, where I'm saying for every connection that has been returned from my CDS list records action, I want to create the row that will represent the recipient and set the participation type mask to four, which equals BCC. And I'm doing that by grabbing the contact ID 
and referencing it in here. So if I go back to my advanced find, basically that ID is represented by the contact value in this lookup of the connection record. So that's what I'm referencing in here. And I'm grabbing this value from my CDS list records action. And then what I'm doing is now I'm appending it to my activity parties array variable. And this will then form all three rows that will represent the three connections associated to my trust, which is um, in associated to the, the case, sorry. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing that we want to do is form the row for the sender in the array. So same technique, we are referencing the case owner, and this time I'm setting the participation type mask to one. And then I've also got a reference to the entity of system user. Sorry, I forgot to mention that up here as well. I'm For my recipients, I'm using the entity reference of contact. And then we all are also appending my sender to the activity parties array variable. Now what I've done in here, again, as just as a temporary um, action is just to show you when I do the run history that the email activity parties array has correctly been formed so that we can ultimately use it in this action in here. So then my two actions are the same actions that AK had shared where he's using an initialized variable to form the at odata.type string so that we can use it in our email target object. And so we have this property up here as well as my email activity parties where I'm referencing my array that now has the three connections as well as the sender. So in our final step in the unbound action, so similar to my last WTF episode, but this time we are using the send email from template and then I'm referencing the template ID that I want to use and we're setting the regarding of the email to the case. And then the target is my JSON payload that we have formed in here. So what I'm gonna do now is trigger the Power Automate. And then I'm gonna show you the run history. Okay, so let's have a look at the run history and check it out. Okay, so this is my Power Automate. It successfully ran. And I'm going to jump straight to the compose action so that I can show you that the array has correctly been formed. So we can see that this is my contact that represents the connection of trustee to the account. So we can see that there are three. And then we can also see that there is also a sender. And then when we have a look at that email target, we can see that JSON payload correctly as well. And then we can also see that, that, that the unbound action has successfully completed. So when we go to the inbox, we should see an email has arrived, which is this one. And we can see that there's been an email sent to one of the trustees. If I also have a look at the inbox of the other trustee, we should see another email, which is this one up here. I'm gonna jump back to uh, CDS or my model driven app in Dynamics 365 and show you what the email activity record looks like. So when I open up this record, we'll see that the BCC field has three contact records. And we can also see that the sender is the owner of the case. And yeah, that is pretty much my Power Automate. So once again, as I mentioned, if you want to use a single email and send it to more than one recipient, you can use this technique. And that is it for today's WTF episode. I hope it made sense. This is very uh, difficult to vlog, but um, I hope you appreciate it. Check out my blog posts, which I have linked down below as well, if you want to do some further reading, if you didn't understand what I was explaining throughout this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have another great WTF episode coming up. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye! Turn up. Let's go. Let's go.